Joining me today is Dr. Tarina Kong. She's doing some interesting work around soft tissue visualization in a cadaver lab. Dr. Kong, tell us a little bit about your clinical background to start off. Well, thanks for having me. I'm the director of uh, emergency ultrasound at LA County USC here in Los Angeles. And um, I'm an assistant professor in emergency medicine. Mm -hmm. So a cadaver lab, that's really interesting to me. Let's talk a little bit about some of the nuts and bolts of the cadaver lab, how it works, and who's using it as a training tool? Sure. So we're really lucky. Our division um, has access to the fresh tissue lab uh, that's run by the Department of Surgery under Dr. Dimitriadis. So twice a month we get to go up to the lab with our ultrasound and we get to uh, practice uh, ultrasound guided procedures and basic and advanced uh, ultrasound applications. Um, so it's a, it's a terrific perk for us. So who, would, who gets this kind of training? This is, these are residents, medical, surgical. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so it's really special in that way uh, because this lab is really designed to teach residents and fellows, so postgraduate trainees. Um, so the focus is mostly on residents and fellows. What is their, what's their reaction to this? When they're, when they're now out of medical school, they're in the, in the clinical domain, are they responsive to this? Is it something that they look forward to? Can it enhance their skill set? Oh, absolutely. Um, that's what I think the unique thing is about this lab um, in comparison to other teaching modalities. Uh, there are a number of ways that you can teach ultrasound. Um, the traditional way is the way that I was taught as a fellow and the way that I taught uh, ultrasound for a number of years after fellowship, and that's where you get up in front of uh, a, a group of trainees, you, you lecture to them, and then you break them up into small groups and have them rotate um, in stations with an instructor, uh, uh, an ultrasound, and small groups. Uh, but with the advent of all this great technology, um, especially a lot of web-based technology, you're able to teach ultrasound pretty much anywhere, um, and not just in the classroom. And so I think uh, sort of a take on that is to uh, go into the lab and, and, and teach uh, ultrasound uh, on cadavers. It's sort of a, a different type of teaching modality that sort of deviates away from the traditional classroom. So that's a little bit about learning ultrasound, but what about learning procedures? I understand that you actually have perfusion pressures, that you have arterial venous flow, synovial fluid, as part of that real life dynamic. How does that play out? Well, I think that's the great thing about the cadaver lab and using the ultrasound the cadaver lab for procedural training, in that we can reproduce uh, real life uh, findings in a living person, such as uh, filling up the vessels with fluid uh, so that when you, say, place a central line uh, by ultrasound guidance, you're able to uh, determine whether or not you're in the correct vessel uh, based on blue or red dye that's actually in the vein or artery, respectively. Um, you're able to inject a joint uh, and then take the fluid back out uh, by ultrasound guidance and by virtue of getting that fluid back out, you know that you've done the procedure correctly. Mm -hmm. I think uh, another perk of being in the uh, lab is that if you're ever unclear as to where or whether or not you did the procedure correctly, you can actually dissect down into the tissue and confirm. Um, oh, that's really interesting. Visualize for yourself. So who are your best customers? Who are the, the residents who are gravitating toward the cadaver lab? What specialties? I think the, the groups of doctors who uh, perform a lot of procedures during their clinical shifts. Are the um, residents looking to learn new procedures, enhance their existing technique? What are some of the, the endpoints as an educator in using the cadaver lab? It's a good question. I think, you know, when you, when you introduce any type of educational uh, modality that's innovative or new, you have to make sure that the trainee uh, comes away from the course or the training better than when they came in. So that's a given. But I think the hard part about um, these types of innovative uh, educational models is that you have to make sure that the trainee is able to perform these procedures just as well six months down the road. So uh, having the trainee retain that information and be able to be as confident to perform the procedure uh, a long time from when they first were taught the procedure is, is vitally important. 
The, the cadaver lab is really cool in that you can um, have the trainee perform the actual procedure. And you know, the cadaver is human tissue. So the, the, the elasticity of the skin, the depth of the subcutaneous tissue, the placement of the anatomical structures and variations of anatomy are all sort of similar, very similar to uh, a live patient in the general population. So when the uh, uh, doctor performs the procedure mm -hmm. in the lab, um, if they don't feel confident about that procedure, the great thing about this is that they can actually perform it over and over and over again until they feel that they have mastered the procedure. And they can come back and, and practice the procedure uh, over and over and over again. Part of the dynamic of live medicine is that we're on a live set and you'll hear trucks and ambulances going by. So some of the sound is actually, here we are in, in Hollywood doing this live, so I apologize for some of the ambient noise. You used a word that I think is very important, and that word is confidence. Tell me a little bit about how the cadaver lab and the use of ultrasound is adding a level of clinical confidence that could ultimately trans translate into better care. So I think the great thing about the cadaver lab and practicing ultrasound-guided procedures in the lab is that um, again, you're able to perform the actual procedure like you would on a live patient. And you are able to perform the procedure in a repetitive fashion until you feel competent. Let me interrupt you and ask you a question. If I'm a resident doing the procedure, do I think it's real? Do I have that feeling, even though it's a cadaver? Is there a, a realness to it that, that rings true? I think a number of studies have asked that question. Um, so uh, they used a more subjective Likert scale-like uh, survey afterwards asking those very questions. How real was your experience in the lab um, to, uh, to actually performing the procedure once you're out on the floors? And in the few studies that I can think of, um, they were very similar and they thought that it was very helpful. That's but great. I think that's a very difficult thing to ask. Sure. I mean, I think the proof is in the pudding. You offer this type of modality where they're able to really have a tactile experience um, with the cadaver and then you see whether or not they consistently perform the procedure well on a live patient. That's, that's great. So I think we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a step back and talk about the lab itself. How's it going? Is it popular? Are there other labs around the country that are moving to use ultrasound guided cadaver labs? Well, I obviously think that it's a terrific uh, perk of uh, working at LAC County, um, but there aren't that many throughout the country. And the reason is, is that it quite frankly uh, takes a lot of um, time, money, and logistical effort to make it come to fruition. I think um, the, the director of the lab, Dr. Dimitriadis, uh, spent over 10 years trying to get this lab uh, functioning at LAC. So it's definitely not um, an easy task. Um, but I think that the, um, the positives that come from it from a learning standpoint and from a patient care standpoint makes it worth it. Terrific. Let's take a step back, a 30,000 foot view of visual medicine using, whether it be looking at ventricular tachycardia on a screen or a pulse tracing or ultrasound to guide a procedure. Tell us your thoughts about visual medicine and how that, that's becoming an important part of care and training in the clinical setting. I think ultrasound at the bedside really does describe the, the true positives of what visual medicine can do for a patient. You place the ultrasound at the bedside, you can visualize uh, anatomical structures, and it tells you a ton of information in just a very short period of time. Anything that you can use that uh, helps you take care of patients better, uh, that's within your scope of practice, you should do. And there are a ton of ultrasounds everywhere in the emergency department, um, and there are a lot of uh, properly trained ultrasound um, uh, emergency doctors who are more than ready to, to teach you. So I think that it's up to us, the onus is on us to, to be able to teach ourselves how to use ultrasound at the bedside. So we've talked about how this may improve education, how it may improve technique. Let's try to ladder this up to some real practical advantages given the complicated healthcare dynamic that we live in today. For example, the hospital, 
the payer. All these complicated factors that oftentimes intercede in the practical aspect of care. Yeah, that, that seems to always be the, the big question. Um, as complex as I think healthcare reform has become, I just try to break it down into a couple of basic points. Mainly, we have to figure out a way to put a cap on the tremendous amount of spending that's going on in the United States. And we also have to figure out how, other than how to figure out how we're going to ensure millions more Americans, we have to figure out ways to do those two things and um, take better care of patients. And it just seems that simple. I think to draw a straight line from using the ultrasound in the cadaver lab and ensuring more Americans is a bit of a stretch. But the bottom line is, is that everything that we do as instructors, um, every educational tool that we decide we're gonna use, we have to make sure that we are teaching our trainees to use the technological advances that are out there for us, such as ultrasound. We have to be able to use the technological advances that are offered to us mm -hmm. uh, within our scope of practice um, if we know that it's been proven to, say, decrease throughput times in the emergency department, decrease medical errors on patients, uh, increase our uh, ability to create a better differential diagnosis and therefore diagnosis, um, and ultimately um, decrease the amount of studies that are done to the patient, including uh, radiation incurring studies. If we have those modalities, which we do in ultrasound, then I think the onus is on us to, to use that and to uh, reach out and learn about them so that um, we can ultimately take better care of our patients. Thank you, Tarina, for a fascinating discussion. We look forward to hearing a lot more about your successes in the future. Thank, Thank you. you.